Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Theodore. I'm one of the creators here at Double Comma Dreams. And in this video, I'm gonna be going through my income and expenses of December, 2022. Now, the main reason for this is so that you could be inspired and see a little bit of my business model. And so that I actually have to organize all of this stuff so that I can look back into it and see what I did well and what I didn't do well. So hopefully it benefits me. Hopefully it benefits you. Let's dig in. First off, this channel itself is growing. You can see the views are up almost 100%, watch time is up 82%, and subscriptions are up quite a bit as well. If you look at these little squares down here, you can see when we actually posted videos to our YouTube channel, which we actually took a long stretch of not posting for a while, and that's just because Nico and I both had other things that we were working on, and you can see how that reflects in the views as well. Something I've noticed here is it's really interesting. I wonder if the niche site community, which is kind of our target audience, uh, is more interested in during the week than the weekend, because it kind of has these humps here where it goes up and down, and they follow the actual like days of the week. So Saturday and Sunday are usually our lowest days, and I just thought that was interesting. In fact, I thought it'd be the other way around. I thought people would be interested about their side income actually on the weekends and not on the actual weekdays. Anyways, if you want to see this number grow, you can click the subscribe button and watch some of our other videos. Moving on, let's dig into my big website, my number one website that I started a long time ago. It's probably three to five years old. I don't know exactly. Um, and you can see here the total posts are 703. And this last month, I actually added a ton of new posts. Now, I didn't write all of these. I actually ordered them from a content agency like four, three or four months ago, and they finally got them to me. So I'm slowly uploading them. Uh, so that it doesn't look like I upload a whole bunch at once, and I'm like proof checking them as well. Sometimes there's some things that need to be edited, some things need to be fixed, adding images here and there. And so that allowed me to upload 55 posts this month to bring my total on this website to 703 posts. Now, the big glaring thing that you'll see on this analytics screenshot is that my traffic is going down. And that's because, without revealing my niche, I am very seasonal with the school year. And so during the summer specifically, and then also over Christmas break, people leave school. They get out of their dorms, they go back to home, and they're not interested in school and searching up these search terms that I am ranking for. And because of that, Christmas and the summer seasons are not good. You can actually see the end of the first semester here. We were up with 15,000 users and it just slowly went down. Now I know because of last year, December like 31st or January 2nd is like my worst days of the year and so they will slowly go up after that. But I know to expect that because I've been doing this for more than a year. Otherwise, <laughs> this would be worrying me quite a bit. But I'm not worried because I know that if I compare this to last year, I'm up like double. So I'm not too worried about it. Now the traffic crash kind of does correlate with revenue drop and even more so ad rates, the amount an advertiser is willing to spend for an ad on a website is like it's like falling so bad. You can see here on my own graph, my RPM, uh, which is this red dot in line here. The beginning of December, I was getting around between $21 and $32 uh, per thousand, I think it's sessions. And you can see it goes up here, and then as the month goes on, it just starts to drop and go down. And I've actually never seen these numbers so low on Mediavine. And I'm actually a couple days into January now, and this actually dropped even more. So it's really scary for other content creators out there that make most of their money through ad revenue. Um, January and February are going to look like they're going to be a little rough. And for me, this is like compounded by the fact that my website actually gets less views during this season. Uh, so this ended up being not the best month. You can see back in the beginning of December, I made like, there was one day I made over $400. And back here, there was a day I made under $100. So that's a bunch of volatility for website one. But it's kind of expected because I know how ad seasonality goes, and I know the seasonality on my website uh, goes down during the end of December, the beginning of January. So again, this is something that I expected, uh, but one thing that I didn't expect is how low the ad rates went, which again affected my income quite a bit. Let's go into expenses. I didn't spend too much, well, I spent five grand on this website, but only in some categories. So the first one here is a writer that I've had with me for probably four years, maybe even five years now, and she has really gotten to know the website. She knows how to do internal linkings, and I absolutely love her. She is probably going to be working with me for as long as I can pay her. Um, and I paid her $2,000. I don't remember exactly, like I didn't look up the numbers of what she did. I trust her. We've worked together for a long time. I've like reviewed her work for years. And so I know that this $2,000 is very well spent. In fact, if I could pay her more money, I would. However, she has a full-time job. So this isn't something that she can like double down on. Secondly, I've actually spent almost $1,000 on images. So this is like custom illustrations, custom images for my website. Um, something to kind of set it apart from AI websites. So the niche that I am, like I said, it's kind of correlated with the school season. Um, 
it's really hard for AI to create stuff of the things that I'm putting on my website. And so if I have custom illustrations, that kind of builds my mode up a little bit against these AI websites. Um, and you can see I actually spent another around $2,000 uh, basically per trying to build my mode up around these AI websites because I know they're coming. And so what I did is I went to Upwork and I spent basically $2,000. Um, I actually paid each person like $250 and then I hired a whole bunch of them and they're all experts in my niche and we basically had an agreement. I said, hey, I'll pay you this money if you, at, number one, edit some articles on my website and number two, let me put you on my about page. And so that builds up my trustworthiness and expertise factors within Google. And another benefit is it allows me to get Harrow backlinks. So I'm going through a Harrow like uh, agency right now that does Harrow outreach for me and how that works is basically there are these journalists out there who want to like quote uh, experts and so they don't just have a list of experts what they do is they sign up to help a reporter out and then help a reporter out basically sends their request to thousands of people who are experts in the field that they may be in and then those experts send their quotes in and then reporters can pick and choose what they want and use those in their article well I want to be the source for some of those reporters so that I can actually get backlinks which builds the authority of my website and so I actually need to have people who can answer on my behalf or rather my website's behalf, and that's part of why I hired them. I said, hey, are you guys fine if I answer on your behalf, or if you have a question that comes in that's relevant to you, can I send it to you, you answer it, and then I send it back, and we have agreement on that. And so that's really what this $2,000 is. I'm just ha forming a relationship with some of these experts in this field. Next, let's move on to website number two. So website number two is really interesting because I have 301 redirected a bunch of websites into it. I purchased like five different websites and basically just pointed them all to this domain that I bought a while ago. The domain is seven letters long and it's super brandable. It's in the pet space and maybe one day I'll reveal it, uh, but I want to build my mode up first before building in public. And anyways, you can see I earned around $154.64. And this is like all those websites that I acquired that I bought all together, uh, they made way more than $154. So I'm waiting for a while for Google to like start putting these rankings back up. Um, and you can see this back actually in the analytics. You can see when I added a website, the traffic went up a little bit. When I added another website, the traffic went up even more. And I think I have one more website to merge into this uh, website. So hopefully it'll go up just a little bit more. But what I have noticed is whenever you do a 301 redirect, you get the immediate boost in traffic. And then as time goes on, you get a little bit more like Google tests it out and knows, hey, this is working fine. And then as time goes on, your website actually gains authority because you just put on a whole bunch of new posts. You gained a whole bunch of new topical authority for that like when you merge them. And so I think the future of this website, I'm just going to let it sit for like three to six months and see how all of these 301 redirects um, help the traffic. Like if they just keep going like normal or if they like spike, like slowly start to spike up or if they like drop off because Google hits it with an update or something. But one thing I will say is that there are now over 500 posts on this website. Um, and last month I added 178 new posts. Um, this number is actually not right. This is actually should be 15,202. Uh, you can see here, December 1st through December 31st, 15,000 page views, which going from 8 to 15, that's actually, I actually doubled the traffic. That's crazy. I didn't realize that. Anyways, I'm really optimistic about this site, and I'm really excited to see how it performs in the next couple months. Um, one of the websites that I acquired actually earns an income through Amazon um, and other affiliate websites that I can't mention, otherwise you'll know exactly what the niche is, but I've started seeing some money come in through that, and that really excites me because I've never earned any money through Amazon affiliates before. So I'm really excited to see how that comes out. <laughs> Let's move on to website two expenses where I spent a bunch of money. So the first thing is that I spent $8,500 actually purchasing another website. Like I mentioned earlier, I bought it. I move all the posts over and then I 301 redirect that domain to the new domain. Um, and that's actually what the next expense is. That was $3,600. I did the same thing. I just bought another website. Um, this website itself, this $3,600 website, I actually haven't merged yet. And we'll get to that in a second. I spent $12,000 at hands-off publishing, um, and I'll give you a little hint onto why I did this. So last year, 2022, I guess, the this year of this income report, I was in a high tax bracket. So I was incentivized to spend money so that my actual income looks lower so I pay less taxes. And so that's what I did. I just front-loaded $12,000, which is basically 300,000 words at hands-off publishing. Um, and in my case, it ends up being around, I think it's like 250 posts, um, which if I could go back, 
I would tell myself not to do that. I think I would rather save the money that I would not get back from deductions. And I'll explain why in a minute. Anyways, that was $12,000. That was a lot of money all at once. I also hired an expert for this website as well. It was $630 and I had her go through and edit 10 posts. Um, and I may talk about this in a future video, but overall, as a recap, this website too, I have spent $45,951 on. And in the last 12 months, so that's what TTM stands for, the trailing 12 months, I've earned $1,151 from it, which comes out to be around 2.5%. Personally, 2.5% is not good. I'd like to see this at least 6 or 7%, and as time goes on, I'd like to get it to like 10 to 15%, um, so that it at least beats the market by a decent margin, especially since I'm like operating this. I'm putting a lot of work into it. But you got to remember, $12,000 of this expense is actually posts that aren't even going to be posted yet. Like, it's going to take a couple months for them to write 300,000 words in terms of articles. So this, I expect this number to go up as the site ages. Next, I keep mentioning that I have a third website. I actually have like four or five that I'm not putting in this income report because they're really not making money yet. But website three is actually, this is its first month of making money. So it's nine months old. It has 107 posts, which by the way, I basically bought a whole bunch of posts and then just put them up and saw what they did. Um, and I, you can see that here. I've spent around $13,000 between images and articles and hiring. I think I hired an expert or two to put on the about page. Um, it's around $13,500. In the last month of December, it received 88 website visits, which generated 23 pennies. Uh, I'm not super excited about that. I wish it would be better, but I will say until I get this figured out about why it's not performing well, or at least better than it is now, I don't think I'm going to be expending more money on this website. Um, another thing that I haven't mentioned in any of the past income reports is that this website is like a seasonal website specifically with the summer. So right now we're in like the worst performing month because there's like snow and ice outside. Uh, but during the summer, I hope that hopefully this website visits go up like at least double, triple, maybe even quadruple um, as time goes on and we get into the summer months. Next, I want to talk about a YouTube channel that I started six years and nine months ago. Um, at this point in time, it's got over 2.1 million subscribers and I've posted 398 videos on it. You can actually see this year in 2022, uh, which is all these graphs, I've only posted, let's see, one two, three, four, five, six. I've only posted six videos on this channel. And last month I didn't post any videos. You can see here, there's no videos posted and it still made me $2,200. So that's pretty exciting. This channel, I wouldn't say is dead. I just have really no interest in working on this channel or outsourcing the future videos for it. Um, and I've tested with it a little bit. I don't want to post a video that does bad and it wrecks the rest of the channel. So this channel, I'm kind of just letting sit there. Even though it has 2.1 million subscribers, um, I think I'm just going to let it sit there for probably the all of 2023 um, and hopefully continue generating money. Let's move on to YouTube channel number two, which I started one year and nine months ago. It's at 800,000 subscribers and it's got 133 videos. Again, you can see in December, uh, let's scoot back over here, that I didn't post any videos in December and I still made $3,553. Uh, one thing you can see about this graph is that the traffic or rather the views are declining. Um, and that has to do with just this niche in particular. I don't want to say anything to give it away, but uh, in December of 2021, this niche was super popular. And now in December 2022, it's not really popular. And you can see that in the views. And if I were to click on this, like if I had a screenshot of the revenue, um, the revenue would look like this as well. Um, for channel two, I don't think I'm going to do like go really hard on channel two because of the popularity decline. But while it sits here, I'm collecting a $3,500 monthly check and I'm okay with that. Now let's go into the total income. We'll add it all up. So YouTube together, both those YouTube channels made $6,300. Mediavine, which was site one, made a little over $7,000. Uh, site two and technically site three made almost $155. Uh, Teachable, which is where I sell like premium courses and digital products and even memberships. Um, I earned 30, almost $32,000 last month, um, which is actually like the bulk of my income. And then other payments methods, which is like affiliate and other payment methods that I, I just didn't, I just wanted to put them all in one category was around $1,500. Together, this makes my total income for December $47,092.22, which again, as I mentioned in other income reports, $47,000 is actually a lot of money. Like, I shouldn't get used to the fact that $47,000 is just like 
I think technically $47,000 is the lowest amount of money I've made in 2022. Uh, so I don't want to get like get used and I don't want to get frustrated or upset that, that I only made $47,000. Like that's still a ton of money and I can still do a ton with 47 grand. Uh, but let's get into where I actually spent that money. Let's go into expenses. You can see here the total expenses is around $66,000, which the first thing you'll notice is that's more than what I made. And we'll get to that in a minute. Advertising, I spent $8,400, and this was me testing out uh, like Pmax ads, um, other advertising stuff. I just want to, I don't have really have experience in advertising, so I wanted to throw some money into it. And also, I think I categorized some backlinks or guest posts into this, this advertising thing. So don't take that for face value. It probably wasn't all advertising, but it was close to it. Uh, supplies, I spent almost $3,500 on supplies, and to be completely honest with you, uh, basically what I did was I bought all the parts to build a new computer, um, and I did this in December so that I could actually basically lower my tax bill a little bit more, and I need a com new computer anyways because we're moving um, to another place. Like, we're going to keep the place we have now, we're just going to be living in another town, um, and it would be really nice not to have to like move my desktop back and forth. So I just spent a little over $3,000 on basically a new monitor, a new PC, keyboard, mice. It all adds up and it ends up being around, uh, specifically the one I built was around $3,500. Um, writing, which is like content writing, what I paid my writers and editors um, was around $10,000, which is a ton of money. Um, I also hired a boot camp assistant. So if you'll watch my previous income report in November, I actually launched a boot camp that made like a quarter million dollars. Um, and so that I don't have to like show up to that thing every day and answer hundreds of questions every day and like have some help creating content. I basically paid someone. Um, again, I front loaded them. I paid them uh, for like three to four months of work um, in December so that that way I could um, and lower my tax bill. I paid them basically 12000 I think it was like $500, and then in uh, Upwork fees got added onto that, so it ended up being around $13,000. Um, and this is not going to be like a recurring thing. This is like I wanted to pay them in December so I could take advantage of my high tax bracket. Now, HOP stands for hands-off publishing, and this is where I bought the 300,000 word uh, content, and that was around $12,237. I guess I didn't get it exactly when I put 12000 here. I, I guess it's a little more than 12000 um, next is training. I spent 12, basically $1,300 on training and long story short, training is like courses and membership things I'm a part of to help grow me. Um, some of the times I pay people, I'll be like, Hey, can I send you $500 and just hop on a one hour call with you to ask you questions? Um, and that money has always been beneficial. Like there's been times where I've, I paid a guy a thousand dollars and what I learned would be worth 10,000. Like in the next month that my income would go up $10,000 based on what I learned from them. And so I'm a big advocate of like spending money on investing in yourself and actually, and I actually sell things that help people invest in themselves. So I wouldn't want to be a hypocrite and not spend money on like self-improvement stuff if I'm selling courses and memberships and stuff like that. Next we have dubbing, which dubbing is a thing I'm getting rid of in 2023. So I think I spent in 2022 all together. I think I spent like 25 grand uh, dubbing my YouTube channels to other languages and what that has returned to me so far has been like, it's like 20 to $25 a month. So it's really not a good return. Um, and the channels don't just pop off like the English ones do. So I'm not going to continue with dubbing, at least until I get, if I find someone who's like has a channel and they've dubbed it in another language and they're like, here's some tricks you got to do. Um, I'm probably, until I can find like an expert in dubbing, I'm probably not going to continue with dubbing. Next, I spent on website and software, I spent 2000 and basically $300. Um, and this is all kinds of stuff like Zapier and ConvertKit. And my website hosting, there's a few other things in there. It's mostly pretty simple stuff. Um, I also spent $12,000 on website app acquisitions. So this is like the, the websites that I bought. And on image creation, I spent around $2,500. So among all the different YouTube channels, the thumbnails, for videos that I've got upcoming, images for the websites, it totals $2,500. So altogether, this is $66,000. So what is my profit this month? So if I made $47,000 and I spent $66,000, that means I actually lost money this month on paper. So how can I make this red? 
So technically I lost $19,192.10 this month, at least on paper. Now, I am actually totally okay with this. Last month, I think I made uh, like $298,000, $290, I don't remember exactly what it was. It was almost $300,000 um, in revenue, and then I spent a bunch of money and got my um, profit down. To, it was still like, I think it was like $200,000 or something like that. Um, and so with such a huge month, I'm okay taking some money out of that month and moving it over to this month so that I can actually invest in my business. Next, let's take a look at my last month goals and see how I actually like stepped up to the plate. So site one, continue content creation, images, and editor. And I definitely did this. I said I paid my editor like over $2,000 and images, I paid over $1,000. Uh, so I accomplished this goal. Next, site two, purchase 300 new articles. I went above and beyond with this goal because not only did I buy 300 new articles, I also purchased a few new websites to merge into that website. Site three, figure out why it's not performing. To be honest with you, I failed at this goal because I, I didn't set a good goal. I don't know why it's not performing. I should have figured out, if I could go back, I would have set a better goal. Instead of figuring out why it's not performing, I would have maybe said something like, find competitors who are performing really well and see what the differences are. I think that would have been a better goal. Either way, I kind of failed at uh, goal number three. Goal number four was specifically set for this channel, and I wanted to make four podcasts, eight clips, four dedicated videos that were basically videos not from podcasts, and then two case studies. In reality, you can see here, we did three pods. I got three clips from those three pods, uh, one dedicated video, and one case study. So I really slacked here, but we also had like holidays, and I did a bit of traveling this month, so I'm not going to beat myself up about this. But I hope in the future I am able to hit the goals that I set for myself on Double Comma Dreams. I'll also say in the last podcast, Nico and I had an honest conversation, I mean literally on the podcast, and basically said that we didn't want to go super hard with Double Comma Dreams because we do have other things that we're working on that would have a higher ROI. Now if we go down to this next goal, I wanted to lose 5 pounds by tracking food intake and cardio. And I wanted to go from 201 pounds to 196 pounds. And in reality, I actually gained one pound. So I definitely failed that goal. Um, and I'm going to make, because I failed on that goal, I'm going to reword how that goal is in next month. And you can actually go to that now. So actually, uh, I think lessons are next. Let's go to January goals. So, so my goals for site one is just to continue content creation, just like I've been chugging along for the last couple months. Continue paying my writer slash editor, continue paying my artist, and just keep that website growing because it is doing so well. For site two, I want to merge that final website. So I said I bought like a couple websites and I hadn't merged the last one. I still need to like copy all the posts over, replace the some affiliate links, and then actually 301 redirect it. So I still need to do that. And then also I want to make 90 AI generated posts. Um, and this is this could probably be a whole video, but I'm gonna create 90 AI posts about a topic, and then I'm gonna hire an editor to go into each one of those posts, make sure that they're actually like, they sound good and they're act like factually correct. And I'm gonna have them insert images into the post. So it's like AI plus like an expert. And I wanna try that with this site. I wanna see how well those, um, since it's all about one topic, I can actually track it really well in Google Search Console and Google Analytics. You just like filter by keyword and all the URLs will have this keyword. And I'll just see like in the next two or three months, how those, if those posts are doing really well, I'll just move to this. I'll just make all my articles in AI and then hire an editor to edit them and add images. And then like, if that works, that's what I'm going to double down on. Site three, I don't want to fool myself. Site three needs to sit for a while. I spent like $13,000 on it and it's not bringing back. It's also like specifically for the summer. So I just need to sit it out. It needs to like sit out for a little while. YouTube channel one, like I said, I don't want to do anything with YouTube channel one. YouTube channel two, I actually want to work on four videos for YouTube channel two. So YouTube is really like, likes fresh videos. So I need to like keep posting if I want that channel to not really stay alive, but like keep making money. And actually two of those videos are sponsorships that I've already agreed to. Um, and those sponsorships are, they're both five figure sponsorships. So I'm really excited to actually like create them and get them out there. And then I did say that one of the, uh, my health goal, instead of saying I wanted to hit a certain weight, I think I'm going to change it to where I'm actually doing something differently. So for January, I'm going to start tracking how many times I get on the elliptical and I'm going to try to hit 20 days out of the 31 days in January. And so that's going to be my health goal. Instead of trying to hit a certain weight, um, and focusing on the numbers, I'm going to instead focus on the process, which is actually me getting on the elliptical. And maybe if this works next month, I'll add in some form of food tracking. But if I can at least get on the elliptical for 20 days out of the 31 days in January, I'll be happy. 
And then finally, um, one of my goals in January is actually to finish and actually use the AI tool to make a bunch of basically AI generated websites. Um, this is going to be something coming soon. And at the end of this video, I'll probably share like a little clip of me using it. Um, I recently posted it on Twitter, so I might as well share it in this video as well. If you're not following me on Twitter, my Twitter handle is six digit niche, but those are my January goals. So hopefully in 31 days, I'm able to actually say that I accomplished these. Um, we'll see in 31 days. Real quick before I end this video, I took some time and thought about some of the things that I learned in December and I wrote them down. So the first one is that um, one thing I noticed is I actually traveled a little bit. I saw some friends, um, we saw some family, and I actually took a break from like working for a little bit. And what I realized is that tr that travel and that relaxation and just getting away from work actually made me more motivated to come back to work. I had all these ideas I wanted to work on and actually try out and do. But I wasn't able to do them because I was taking a break. And so when that break finally ended, I was like, I'm so ready to get back into the office and like start grinding away and working on some stuff. Obviously, I think you can take it too far, but that is one thing I noticed this month and I just wanted to make a note of it. Another thing that I noticed is that losing weight is much easier if you have a routine. So again, this month we had like traveled a little bit. Um, we saw family. Things were a little weird. We had like... In there were times where I had to go inside and uh, watch my son on times that I usually don't watch my son, uh, which isn't a bad thing, but it kind of like changes my routine. So I eat at a different time. Maybe I sleep a little bit less one morning. Um, and what I realized is losing weight, and you could probably extend this to anything, it's much easier with routine. So I'm really excited to like get past the New Year's like hump of like Christmas and New Year's. Um, so that we can actually get back into a routine and doing the same things at the same time every day because I do think it helps us become more consistent um, and I say we as in like me and my wife just the goals that we're working on um, I'm really excited to like get back into a routine another thing I noticed is that acquiring a niche website is way easier than building one from scratch so whenever you buy a new website you've already got an asset that is one already making money so you, a lot of it's already figured out. Number two, it probably already has backlinks. So if you add a post to that, it does better than a new website when you add a post. And number three, it's probably already past the so-called Google sandbox, even if there is one. Um, what I found is that buying a website as opposed to building a new one, it just gets you like, it saves you so much time. So obviously you're trading the time that you would spend building one for the capital that you have to spend buying one. Uh, but I think moving forward, I think buy, like if I want to, I was thinking about this earlier. If I want to get into the travel niche, instead of me starting a new website and then waiting a year to get past like the year mark, I think what I'll do instead is just go to Flippa, buy, find a website that has to do with the travel niche, buy it, and then start adding the posts that I want to create. Um, you can do the same thing with whatever, like mattress reviews or whatever. Just go find another website that they're ready to sell buy it, you already have cash flow, you already have domain age, you already have some backlinks, and then add posts to that website and grow it from that. Um, I think I'm at a part in my life where that's what I'm going to start doing because I do have some extra capital. Um, I'm not recommending this and I'm not speaking this over anyone. I do think there are times when you should be in the build mode and you have that time to trade for uh, building a website. But I think I'm at the time now, instead of starting from scratch, I would be much better off taking some capital that's just sitting in a bank account, buying it, and then working on that website more. Um, the last thing that I learned this month is that we were trying to like limit how much we ate out. Um, and not just fast food, but like just how much we spend on groceries and stuff. Um, what I realized is it's much easier if we actually use cash. So you can, this is all over the internet, um, but we actually tried it and it worked. So a big part of this was actually holding each other accountable. So it's really easy if you like say you're going to use cash that month for like if you go out to eat at Sonic or something. But what's harder than that is not just setting, saying, hey, we got $200 for fast food this month, is actually instead of like, hey, I'm going to go to Sonic, like holding the other person accountable and saying, hey, like make sure you pay with cash, don't pay with your card, because it's super easy to just out of habit, pull out your wallet and uh, or purse, I guess, who's ever watching this, and like swipe it instead of just paying with cash. Um, and so what we did really well th this last month, uh, my wife and I, is we held each other accountable. So there would be a time where she'd be like, I really want uh, a burger from this place. And I'd be like, uh, well, are we already halfway through our uh, budget, even though it's like the fifth day of the month? Like, maybe we shouldn't do that. Um, and she did that to me <laughs> multiple times. So I was like, this sounds really good. Let's go get it. And she'd be like, well, you know, we have a budget. We're trying to stick to it. And that was super helpful. So holding each other accountable for those uh, little like personal finance goals um, I have realized like us being on the same page and wanting 
uh, to do like this, have the same goals has, is really beneficial. And it's just something I've been married for a while now, but this last month is like, it, it would just showed a great example that we actually stuck to our $200 limit. Um, and so I found that I just wanted to share that, see if it helped anyone else. Uh, so wrapping this up before I end this video, I am going to share it with you that AI like little thing that I built. Um, but if you have any questions about anything in this video, sometimes the questions that you ask on my income reports help me like make better decisions. And so I love answering questions. Um, and again, hopefully they'll help you as well. If you learned anything from this, click the like button. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play that video that I edited of me using that tool. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this video. Hey, so I made this little tool I thought it would be cool to share. So what you do is you type in a keyword or a title and you click generate outline. And what that does is it starts writing this article. Now, the first thing it does is come up with an introductory paragraph and then it comes up with a snippet and then it comes up with headlines. And then finally it comes up with a YouTube video that it pulls straight from YouTube and puts at the bottom. Now, the cool thing about this is maybe the first headline doesn't make sense. Like sometimes it's like introduction. What is a poodle? Well, you don't want a headline like that. So you can change it if you want. So now that we have the headline set, we can go back up here and click on fill text. And what that'll do is actually answer each one of these headlines. So now it's written out a huge answer to whatever this is. And you can see up here, it's also generated some images. So this is basically creating an article with images, with text, with headlines. Uh, and the cool thing is maybe something's not right. For example, maybe this whole paragraph isn't right. You select it, you delete it, you add in your own thing. Just like that. And something I just recently added is maybe you don't like this entire paragraph. You just click regenerate. It'll load a new one for you. And only this paragraph. All the other ones will stay the same, especially if you've edited them. Anyways, I thought that was really cool. If you want to see more of this tool or if you want to be one of the early testers to like use it and see what you think of it, maybe give me some feedback because personally, I'm going to be using this for my own sites. You can simply just like this tweet and maybe leave a comment of what I should add next down below. Thanks for watching.